be Jesus and Mary. Now and Jesus' enemies have come to the conclusion that they will have to put him to death and in an ignominious way so that no one will continue to follow his teaching after his death. After the gospel that we heard yesterday, St. John narrates the multiplication of the loaves and the discourse on the bread of life. Many of the Jesus' disciples did not believe, turned back and no longer walked with him. For six months then, Jesus prudently remained in Galilee, away from the Jews of Jerusalem who wanted to kill him. Then the time came for the Feast of, of Tabernacles in September or October. And the feast commemorates how God provided for Israel in the desert when the people dwelt in tents or huts. It is the, the fall harvest celebration. And in Jesus' time, it was also suffused with messianic hopes. Yet at that very feast, we find that there are some who want to kill the Messiah. The first reading speaks of the wicked who seek to kill the just one, whom they can't stand for several reasons. In this, the early church saw a clear prophecy of Christ's passion. He reproached the scribes and the Pharisees for transgressions of the law and did not follow their ways. He professed to have a special knowledge of God, whom he received, which he received from his father. And he even boasted, to use their word, that God was his, was his Father. And all this and more matches what the sacred author of the Book of Wisdom wrote long before Jesus was born. Unaware that they were fulfilling prophecy, the Jewish leaders planned to do the very things that the Book of Wisdom says. It says, if the just one be the Son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. In this way, they they justified their persecution, thinking that it could only succeed if it were right to condemn him. So they planned to put him to the test with revilement and torture. And in his passion, reviled and tortured, he did indeed prove gentle and patient, remaining silent like a sheep before its shearers, or like a lamb led to the slaughter. And St. Augustine says this of, of the, uh, the relation between this, this book and uh, and Jesus' passion. Because Jesus was crucified and not, and not freed, they believed that he was not the Son of God. Thus believing, thus insulting him as he hung on the cross, they shook their heads, saying, If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. With these words, as one reads in the Book of Wisdom, they thought thus, but were mistaken. Their wickedness blinded them. Their wickedness blinded them to the fact that, that uh, they were wicked. The wickedness, their wickedness blinded them. Uh, and they believed themselves to be good, to be models of, of religion. And yet here they were plotting to kill the Messiah. And so if we are just as God requires of us, we may meet with opposition as Jesus did, especially in, in this age where you know, in our time and, and in, in our, our place, the, the United States, where uh, so many people uh, think of, of, uh, of wickedness as, uh, as a right, as, uh, as something that, that people should be allowed to do and indeed must be allowed to do in order to fulfill themselves. And so if we oppose these things, we will meet with, with, up, we will meet with, uh, with persecution quite, uh, quite probably. And like Jesus, we must be prudent and avoid unnecessary danger. But if we must face danger, let us remember that God is in control and he does not overlook any detail. Not a hair uh, of our head will be lost, not a, a sparrow falls to the ground without our, our Lord, uh, uh, without our Lord uh, permitting it. So, getting back to Jesus' case, you know, prudently Jesus decided that he should not go up to the Feast of Tabernacles publicly, and he let his, his relatives leave for the, the feast without him. Later he too went, but without being accompanied by a crowd, without drawing any attention to himself, because it was not yet time for his solemn entry into Jerusalem, which would come six months later, just before the Passover, Palm Sunday. He showed himself in the temple midway through the feast and began teaching. The temple had always been a place to teach the law of the Lord. And as he taught, people were surprised to see that he could do so openly. As on other occasions, opinion was divided about him. 
you know, there were those who thought you know, that he, he was the Messiah because uh, he was showing all the signs of being the Messiah. And there were others who found uh, some objection to, to exclude him from being the Messiah. So there were those who said that maybe even their leaders have now realized that Jesus really is the Messiah. But there were also those who said that he could not be the Messiah because everyone knew he was from Nazareth. They thought that the, the Messiah would appear suddenly and unexpectedly so that no one would know where he was from. Of course, they knew that the Messiah had to be born in Bethlehem, uh, but he would come onto the scene uh, unexpectedly. Whereas Jesus had been around for years and, and had not uh, yet done anything uh, you know, that was uh, just you know, very strikingly uh, uh, something that the Messiah was supposed to do. So Jesus uh, replies, you know me and you also know where I am from. But I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. That is, no, God is faithful, God is truthful. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. So while they knew that he was from Nazareth, they did not know that he was from God. They did not, especially did not know that he was from God in the sense of being the, the eternal Son who proceeds from the Father. The authorities realized that Jesus was claiming a special connection with God that seemed blasphemous to them, so they tried to have the temple guards arrest him. But no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. We so again we see the hand of, of providence in our Lord's life. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers them. And, and so it is that the Lord always delivered, uh, you know, that God, the Father always, always delivered Christ, always delivered him from, from every danger, even from the, the, the danger uh, of, of, uh, of you know, real destruction in his crucifixion, because that uh, worked rather to his glory. So as it was for Jesus, so it is for every just one uh, who is persecuted. For those who love God, all things work together for good. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen.